Aloha, happy Friday. Welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. This is Kawi Lucas. And today we're going to talk about a film that has been um, trying to be made for a long time. And it's, uh, the subject is Barack Obama. And this week, I just really felt a need to, to talk about Barack. Um, uh, we shared the Punahou campus uh, for a couple of years. He was a, a sophomore when I was a, a junior when I was an incoming freshman. And um, the picture behind us is of the, the Punahou campus. Uh, the, and um, it's just, uh, this is a, a film about his roots and how Hawaii influenced him. And this week has is, is been a very emotional week. And um, Gloria Borland, who has been working on this film with extraordinary dedication for a very long time, thank you for coming to, to talk about the film, where it is, and tell us a little about the, the horrible story that, that uh, what happened as you were um, trying to get the, the <clears throat> momentum build. And, and somebody said, they didn't want you to make it. What happened? Well, first of all, I'm from Hawaii, and I was raised here and um, went to college in Washington, D.C., and then um, was involved in media in Washington. And while Obama was going through the primary, when he was running, starting to run it for uh, the presidency, um, people always, especially the press and the media and my colleagues there, they always assumed that he was, they liked him, but they didn't understand him. He was supposed to be the angry black man from Chicago. And I said, no, he's from Hawaii. <laughs> and that's not the stereotype, you know? And, um, and they didn't understand Hawaii, because most, most people, especially the professionals on the East Coast, have never been to Hawaii. They don't know Hawaii. They only know Hawaii from the stereotypes. And um, so friends told me to um, set the record straight and explain um, Obama's biography and Hawaii in the context of that. And I was uniquely um, able to do that because I grew up here. Um, I'm five years older than Barack, so the same 60s and 70s, that, that period of Hawaii. I'm also Hapa, you know, half black, half Japanese. So I understand how <laughs> that when you go to the mainland uh, for college and the shock that, uh, you know how you're how, how you're seen that way, but in, as um, as you know, producing a documentary film, um, the research was years in the making, um, and and to have a quality that we want for a theatrical release, you know, requires funding. And I, as a fund, fundraising in Washington D.C., um, I always kept getting roadblocks. You know, I, I would raise some funds and then roadblocks, and then. The Washington Post did a story on my efforts, and I was surprised to find out, which was great publicity, in the, and, it, yeah, and it was picked up all oh over, because the, 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 the editors of the Washington Post said that the research and the information in this film was something they never knew. They, they, after they saw what we had and they saw my work in progress, they said, oh, yeah, now it makes sense. You know, the Aloha spirit is in him. We see that. You know, we see how his values, the Obama drama, that's just the way... <laughs> people here behave. They don't scream and yell at each other, you know. So that's so they started to understand that. Um, but then I also got feedback after the Washington Post article that the uh, Chicago political operatives had for years been um, trying to squash me. You know, they didn't want the Hawaii story out because professionally um, they branded Obama as Chicago, and they didn't want anything to interfere with that brand. Um, and, and including Hawaii. <laughs> you know, they put Hawaii on the same level as too exotic, too non-American. Well, oh, Kofi Roberts just a couple of years <laughs> right, ago. Right, right. You know, why, is he going, why isn't he going to Myrtle Beach? Right, right. Well, and, and that's where middle-class blacks would go to um, on vacation is Myrtle Beach. Oh, they wanted thank to, you. They wanted to pigeonhole him, him that way. Um, but they didn't understand that this is where he grew up. This is where his family is, and in in all, you know I did the same thing. You know, even though you're away from in, on college, in college on the mainland, you come home every Christmas to see your family. And he's been doing that for for since you know he he left for college. But even when they lived in Indonesia, um, they would come home for Christmas to Hawaii to visit their grandparents. So um, Hawaii's home, but that message was never told to the American public, and the press never understood that. And until and somebody got upset about it. Because you were doing such a good job. Yeah, well, they, you know, one thing about um, political operatives, um, they didn't even, I don't even think they saw what I did. They just made the decision Hawaii 
maybe it's part of our multi millions of dollars worth of Hawaii it, <laughs> advertising, <HGS>. right? You know, <laughs> we're exotic. We're this. We're we're off the beaten path. You know, you you want to come to Hawaii and escape. We're not. And so the stereotype is Hawaii is not part of America. And um, even the best and the brightest in Washington D.C., you wouldn't believe how many members of Congress have never been to Hawaii. You know, and we suffer the stereotypes. Do you live in grass shacks? You know, they don't, yeah. and they don't realize that we are progressive politically. In, in spite of HTA, right? And Magnum PI and Hawaii Five O, and yeah, it's it's bizarre, yeah. right? And they don't, and, and also when they were building the li bidding for the library, I remember one of the um, somebody from Chicago, a historian, said. You know, scholarly work needs to be in Chicago, Hawaii. They don't do scholarly work in Hawaii. You know, the stereotype, we're a bunch of beach bums, so they don't see that there are great big thought leaders from Hawaii. And so in the film, we also mentioned, um, you know, um, great, uh, we explained through Obama's biography, Hawaii's history too. You know, from statehood to being the first to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment. We had the first um, nearest, closest universal health care was from Hawaii. Um, and and Obama, was, Obama was 13, and that's where health care comes from. But in, on the mainland, they don't get it. And the people that put the health care plan together, they didn't even look at Hawaii. They looked at Massachusetts because Massachusetts told the world that they were the first state, which was not true. That was a, um, that was a lie. <laughs> Hawaii was. So it's just, uh, it's, it's a lot of stereotypes. And the, mis mis the mission of this film is to change the stereotypes um, that the president um, feels and still um, receives, as well as Hawaii. Let's, let's watch a clip. You have some um, lovely montage of images mm, that come in in the uh, at the end. Or, at the end, it's the closing montage. for that little sweet, sweet, sweet little trip down memory lane. Oh, so poignant today, um, today, the day that um, Obamacare has been uh, undone. Well, it was a, the, very, the very first step of rescinding. Oh, anyway, okay, so um, it's, it's, it's a hard thing to to digest all of this. So now that now that um, there isn't the 
political pressure against you telling the story. Do you think um, it'll be it'll be possible to to sort of bring this to uh, fruition a little easier? Well, I this is one of the reasons why I moved back home two years ago is that I wanted to finish it here because I knew that I would be able to get the support and funding to finish the film. Um, here in Hawaii, and, and it's difficult in Washington when people haven't been to Hawaii, and and they're also you know focused on the Chicago story. So um, so, so it'll be finished here, and and if you look at um, some of the some of the stills, and I mean, it, 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 people don't realize that his grandfather, Barack Obama's grandfather, Gramps, was absolutely was, he was he only had a high school education, but he was absolutely brilliant. Maya told me that his, her, their grandfather had a repertoire of 3,000 jokes. <laughs> it was brilliant. <laughs> and um, one, one thing I, I heard from ta interviewing um, Stanley's um, co-workers and friends is that he loved his grandson and he encouraged Barry over and over, when you grow up, you can be president of the United States. Really? He actually so when said you, that? Yes. When you're a little kid and you're growing up and your grandfather is telling you, you can be president of the United States someday, my gosh, that has an impact on you. So he was conditioned from his grandfather to be an optimist, to be patriotic, that he could do anything. And over and over and over, he could be president of the United States. Now, Stanley, when he was working for an insurance company, John Hancock, um, not on Fort Street Mall, his coworkers remember at least four times, at least four times he would go into the office and say, my grandson is brilliant and he's got such a heart, great heart, he could be president of the United States someday, at least four times to his coworkers. Wow. So when you have that since you're really little, that says a lot. And then we have a, a, a picture of the, just to kind of put things in perspective again, of the, the, the disconnect. Um, we seem so connected these days, but are we really that, that um, the, the whole birther thing, that, that somehow it managed to go all the way through eight years of a presidency and people kind of, it, finally it became just a joke, but that it had so much impact when it really was just a um, black, and white thing. I mean, there aren't a lot of things that are, but <laughs> that is one that is. I mean, you have a picture of um, uh, uh, the woman who had, she had twins, was it? Yeah, Eleanor Nordyke. Um, I interviewed her in 2009, August 2009, and her twin daughters were, bo were born um, on the, at the same hospital, the same, same day. They were about 24 hours apart from Barack Obama. And so they're, the, the, the numerical sequence on the yeah. birth certificates of her twins were in the same order as Obama. So it shows that it couldn't be forged because it was in the same numerical sequence. And um, also her twin daughters ended up going to Noelani Elementary School as Barry and then also Punahou. Um, and, and their last name was Nordyke. Their, um, her husband um, was a surgeon, a nuclear yes, scientist. Yes, yeah. yes. And so, um, and, and then, oh, so Nordyke and Obama, they were on the same yearbook page. Ah, yes. Yes. Oh my goodness. So the the um, the way that um, the softness and the gentleness and the um, inc inclusivity, all of those are things that we associate with Hawaii. And yet, um, uh, Barry was or uh, Barack was um, uh, able to translate that successfully into this this beautiful. Um, presidency, even if, and it's really, really true that I did not always agree with his policies, certainly not, but especially is, as they have transitioned out of the White House, to see the beauty and grace and the gratitude and just the graciousness with which um, the Obamas are, are leaving it um, is, is such a credit to Hawaii. And I'm hoping that um, your work will, will, will give Hawaii its due in, in that sense. And I, I also felt that it was part of my kuleana, to, to, no matter what the obstacles were, even when the Chicago guys said they didn't want the story out. You know, it, it was shocking, it was hurtful, but I said, I've got to keep going because I have got to tell Hawaii's story. That's my loyalty. It's my kuleana. But um, how he behaved himself as president 
it was over and over the Aloha spirit. It was Aloha to everybody. And um, Governor Mike Dukakis, who ran for president in 1988, came to Hawaii for several months and he studied our health care system. And he even says that I interviewed him in Boston in um, 2014. He said, oh, the way the president governs is Aloha. <laughs> so he said that he validated it. Gloria, we're going to take a short break and then be back and talk some more. Okay. Okay, I'm here with Brent Obergaard of the Faculty of the School of Journalism in the Department of Communications at UH Manoa. We've had a number of shows. We have a movable feast going on, and we talk about journalism, we talk about language, we talk about communication in general, and we talk about the effect of that on the country and on individual people. Brent, it's so good to, to be able to discuss this with you in our movable feast. Oh, it's my pleasure. This is a great opportunity. You'll have to come back again and again, okay, deal? Uh, that's the deal. Brett Opergaard, <laughs> I'm Jay Fidel. We care about everything. Thanks. <laughs> Aloha, Kako. I'm Marcia Joyner, and I'm inviting you to navigate the journey. We are discussing the end of life options, and we would really love to have you every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. right here. Hey, has your signal just been taken over, or am I supposed to be here? This is Andrew, the security guy, your co-host on Hibachi Talk. Please join us every Friday on Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kawe Lucas, and with me here today is Gloria Borland, who's the director, producer, everything. This is your brainchild, Gloria, um, the Barack Obama Made in Hawaii film. Um, so um, let's, let's dive in and take a little uh, history of Barack, um, starting with his, his mother. And um, tell us, tell us a, what, are, what are your favorite mom stories? What I was really impressed, because this, again, it's a stereotype. During the campaign in 2008, the press falsely portrayed his mother as a hippy dippy, you know? And in and, and my research, it was, it was extraordinary to find out that she was a brilliant scholar. First of all, she's, she was only born in Kansas. She was really raised in Seattle. So she really is from the Pacific Northwest, and her values come from Seattle and the Pacific Northwest, not Kansas. Um, she was the smartest girl at Mercer High School, Mercer Island High School, and she was absolutely brilliant, extraordinarily high IQ. And um, she was, um, um, you know, like, she did microloans, and, and back, she was a trailblazer in that, and, and finding um, the ability to be able to give loans to poor village people. Um, Mohammed Yunus got the Nobel, Pri Nobel Peace Prize yes. for giving, doing microloans Michael. in Bangladesh. Obama's mother was doing the same thing at the same time in Indonesia, but never got the publicity or the credit. Wow. Same thing, same wow. kind of trailblazing work, and that's his mother, absolutely brilliant. So how long did they live in Indonesia? Um, she, well, he was only there for a little over three years, and he would come home to Hawaii to see his grandparents for the Christmas holidays, and also when, um, and, and during the summer. Um, but his, his key, his major influence, you know, 14, 15 years, was in Hawaii, out of his first eight, 18 was Hawaii. And no one knows that on the mainland. All the historians, they all focus on Indonesia or Chicago. Well, what said. age was he in Indonesia? Um, he went in first grade uh -huh. and second grade, but he was back here in Hawaii in third grade at Noilani and then, and then fourth grade, and then he took the exams to come to Punahou at fifth grade. And we had a, have a darling picture of him at Noilani um, as a as kindergarten. a kindergartner. Right. Oh, how cute. And you look at that class and you just think, um, look at that smile. I mean, you, you just know that um, things are going to be good for this kid. Standing behind him are his two teachers. And I interviewed them in 2010. They've retired from the Hawaii public school system in Maui. And uh, they remember little Barry in their kindergarten class. Um, and he's, and they, they talk about his personality. It was still the same how he behaved in kindergarten as how he is as president. Well, I didn't personally know him. Um, I, although, I, I mean, I didn't, you know, we didn't hang out together or anything. I mean, he was an upperclassman. So, but I, of course, knew him, just his presence on, on campus as he went bopping around and his smile. I mean, who can not forget, uh, I mean, who can n not remember that smile? Um, and um, just, just 
being having that incredible energy. I mean, being energetic. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Um, so um, I didn't know until um, learning about your film that he that he had a, a, a half brother right. who lives in Asia, and you were able to talk to him. Right, um, Mark Obama. They share the same father, the same Kenyan father, and um, they have they both have white American mothers. So when, when Obama Sr. went, after he left Hawaii and got his degree at University of Hawaii, now the press reports say that he left at two. He really left when Barry was not even one and um, went to Boston, went to Harvard. And while he was at Harvard, he met Mark's mother. Um, she's um, a Lithuanian Jew and um, um, was studying to be a teacher. And so that's, and so he married her after, um, he had <laughs> a lot of women, but anyway, he married, and so so Mark and David were born um, from from that relationship, and so Mark is five years younger than Barry Obama, and he and they're a lot they're similar, although they weren't raised together. They're similar in, in many ways intellectually. While when Barack was going off to Harvard Law School, um, Mark was going to Stanford, and there was a little rivalry between the two, <laughs> and but Mark went to China um, and fell in love with the place and the culture and he's been there for 14, 15 years and he's married to a, a woman from China, from Sh in Shenzhen. So I went and visited him in, in March and interviewed him about their father because um, he's a mystery and there's a lot of stereotypes and misconceptions about who the, his, their father really was. So I, who better that to give testimony than the son, <laughs> Mark Obama, who actually lived in, with the so father. So did Mark, oh yeah. Mark lived with the father for, for a long time? Well, up until um, eight or nine years old and then his parents divorced, um, there was domestic violence uh -huh. in that family. Um, and um, so he te in the interview he talks about, you know, the, the trauma of um, domestic violence and that who, and Barack was sheltered from that. He was not exposed to domestic violence. So in a way, Barack's personality was able to evolve and grow in a nurturing, loving environment with his mother and grandparents in Hawaii and not in that dysfunctional, crazy, you know, alcoholic domestic violence. But that's the reality. That's the truth. That's the history. So, and uh, were you able to, um, so you talked and in the film you'll have the interviews with, with Mark? Oh, yes. Mark was freely and open and talked to I mentioned yeah. all that, <laughs> so that's in the film. Um, so um, uh, we also have a wonderful picture from um, uh, his sister, speaking of siblings, uh, wedding. And there's, I, I love this because you, you get, it's like the UN, all in one picture and right. all in one family. Right. Uh, when Ma, This is when Maya married Conrad, and Conrad's from Chinese family from Canada. And um, this is what the story came from Neil Abercrombie, who knew Obama's parents at UH. So Neil was in the wedding reception audience, and um, Barack and, and his wife, Michelle, and daughters flew in from Chicago to give Maya away. He spoke on behalf of, of Maya's family at, at the wedding reception. And while he was speaking, um, Neil Abercrombie looked over to his wife and said, oh my god, he's going to be president of the United States someday. It struck Neil that this Barry was going to be was going to be president someday, and this is when he was still a state senator. State senator. <laughs> state senator, right? Wow, before he even US. started, and so wow. right. So he just knew intuition-wise. When 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 Barack spoke about family, he spoke about Ohana. Exactly the same thing he said during the campaign trail in 2008. The exact same thing, and that's what touched everybody all across the United States, all across the world. When he talked about the goodness in people and, you know, that there's hope and that we all can come together and our better days are ahead of us. Those are all values from Hawaii. And that's how, well, that's how he speaks. And it's not prepared. It's not speech writing. It comes from his heart. And that's why people, that's why 69 million Americans voted for Obama twice because of that message, that message. So I assume that Barack knows that you are making this film. I don't think so. Really? No, he's in a he's in a bubble when you're the president of the United States. Information only gets to you through the chief of staff in your that's Washington. I mean, it's amazing. Nothing it's they but, control what but gets But my it. his sister knows. 
Yeah, she, I interviewed her several times, and, um, but right, it, and so she, I'm, I'm really grateful that she, um, that I was able to interview her for um, the Dunham side of the family. But um, it's, he's dealing with two wars, and <laughs> there's, there's, it's very, very hard. It's, no, I, I, I don't think he knows about so it. So what, what are your plans for the movie at this point? Well, I've uh, found a wonderful production company here in, in Hawaii. Um, this, they're seasoned pros. They just finished a, a documentary that aired on Hawaii News Now. They're really great. And so we're in the process of, um, of raising finishing funds. And with their, their post-production team, we're going to um, um, complete it, finish the editing. And there's some of the interviews that we're, we did in 2008 when it was the technology was standard definition and not high definition. So we're going to redo some of those, those interviews, reshoot some of those. But it'll be a top-notch film that could be shown um, any place in the world. Wow. So uh, that's, that's our goal. Yeah. Uh, and then in our, our last minute here, Gloria, um, what, what can you say is maybe one of your, your most touching moments in the process of making this film? Out of the, I interviewed over a thousand people. Oh my gosh. Uh, over the last eight years, over a thousand people. I would, 51 on camera, 51 on camera, and about five emotionally broke down and cried when they opened their hearts, you know, and that was just so powerful when they were talking about their experiences with, with Barry or Barack. I mean, it, they just broke down and cried, and it was so emotionally touching. Um, and, and, and the message that Hawaii, you know, Hawaii is the most, I've been, I've traveled around the world. I've been to 70 countries, you know, Tibet, Kenya, I've been all over the world. Um, what brought me back home to Hawaii is Hawaii is still the best place in the world. And our culture and how we treat people is a story that needs to be told. And in this Trump era, where everyone's afraid of, you know, all the people that don't look like them, you know, and the Caucasians are afraid, and, you know, let them see Hawaii and see how we get along and that we have something special. We've had, we've been doing this for like hundreds of years. This is unique. And the story of Hawaii needs to go out to the world, that we lead in renewable energies. We, we, we have brilliant minds that have come up with technology. Yeah. We, it's not just a we beach. We have great, yeah, we have, gr it's not just a beach. We're at, this culture and where everyone comes together really is a catalyst for great things. And Thank that's you, Gloria. <laughs>